Hello everyone! With the release of version 15.30, PLSCAD now has the ability to define circuits and electrical phase labels to tension sections. This allows you to display your wires according to their respective circuits or phases, making it easy to track the circuits and phasing from one end of a project to another. Additionally, you can now run reports like survey point clearances and thermal rating based on circuits and phasing. You can also easily generate phasing diagrams, but that is covered in a separate video. The project that we will be using in this video is an example project that ships with the software. It is called WPL underscore demo dot XYZ. To begin using circuits and phasing, you must first start by developing a table or list of the desired circuit and phase labels you want to assign to your sections. This is accessed by navigating to Sections, Electric, Define Circuits and Phases slash Labels. In this table, you will develop all of the circuit and phase labels you want to pick from. Each row in the table represents a different circuit, and each circuit can have up to three phases. Note, however, that if your circuit has less than three phases, you do not need to worry about the information in the columns of phases you won't be using. When you first start using circuits and phase labeling, this table will come pre-populated with these four circuits, overhead ground wires, communication wires, circuit 1, and circuit 2. You can, if you want, clear these circuits out and make your own. For each circuit, you can control the display at a circuit and individual phase level. For circuit display, you can choose the color of the circuit and line style. Note that you can, if you want, choose the line style of none if you wish to hide a circuit. This can be very handy for PMP drawings if you only wish to show one circuit of a multi-circuit line. Similarly, you can choose a color and line style for each individual phase, which can be very helpful in generating phasing diagrams. Each phase also has an input column for electrical phase angle. Currently, this input field is not utilized, but in future versions, improvements will be made to the EMF calculator and line constants calculations that will use it. After you develop the labeling you want for circuits and phases, you are now ready to assign your tension sections with circuit and phase labels. You can do this either in a table format or graphically. Let's start by looking at the table first to see how the feature works. You can get to the table by navigating to Sections, Electric, Define Circuits and Phases slash Table. The information in this table is updated automatically if you are assigning labels graphically. Each row in this table represents an individual wire from one dead end to another. You can see all the information about each wire, like what structure it starts and ends on, what set number it uses, and what stringing phase number it uses. And the stringing phase is not the same as electrical phase. It's arbitrary and only used when stringing the section. This first row, for example, is section number one, and it is just one phase, 0KV, a shield wire. So there's only one row in the table for section number one. If we scroll down, though, to a transmission wire here at row 41, we see that section number 41 is a three-phase set and has one row for each of its three phases. If we wanted to, we could go through this table and for each section select a desired circuit label in this column and a desired phase label in this column. I'll pick the overhead ground wire circuit for this wire and the SW for the phase label. Note how when I click on the phase label drop-down menu on a single phase set, I see only one phase label. But for a three-phase set, like section 41, I see phases A1, B1, and C1. After I pick the circuit 1 for the circuit label. Now for a line with lots of sections, this table may appear a bit daunting task to fill out. And that's what we have the graphical commands for. But before we take a look at those, Note how this column shows that I have jumpers modeled for all of the sections. You'll see some sections don't list that jumpers are modeled, but that is because those sections are at the very start and ends of the lines, substation to substation. All of the intermediate dead ends have jumpers modeled. If you model jumpers on your project, the assignment of circuits and phase labels is very easy. Once you assign a circuit and phase label to a particular wire, it will trace itself along the project and follow along any jumper modeled connecting one section to another. And notice how this table is updated automatically when I make a label assignment to section 41. But you don't need to model jumpers to use this feature. You can manually connect one section to another and phase to phase by selecting the connected set numbers and phase numbers in these columns. 
The other columns to mention are the connected backwards and break link column. The connected backwards column is utilized if you're defining a circuit start on the tension section's end structure instead of the beginning structure. This is needed when stringing sections out of order. And the break link column is used automatically when an issue needs to be resolved. Examples of issues would be trying to connect more than one section to another or making a loop, finishing where you started. But since this column is adjusted automatically, you do not need to worry about it. Now you can see that with a decent sized project, this table can fill quickly and entering your connections and navigating through it can get confusing. So let's take a look at some of the graphical commands now. So after closing this table, let's first change our display condition so that we are coloring by phase. So I navigate to Sections, Display Options. And you'll see we now have two different coloring options, Color by Circuit and Color by Phase. Now if you don't have any circuits assigned to the sections, it will default to the color specified in Sections Modify. This is the first option. And if you choose the Color by Phase option and don't have any phase labels assigned, the sections default to the circuit color. Let's start by coloring by phase. Now to assign circuits graphically, I navigate to Sections, Electric, Set Circuit Label. I then click on the section I want to assign, and I'll start by clicking on one of the shield wires. I then assign my circuit label overhead ground wires, and I select the SW phase label. Notice how there is only one option for the phase label because this is a one phase set. After I click OK, you'll see my shield wire is now being colored according to its phase display and my circuit and phase labels show overhead ground wires SW. If I pan along, I get to the first dead end structure at 107 and notice how the phase continues through the dead end. Every tension section connected by a jumper is automatically assigned to the circuit so for my entire line, the overhead ground wire circuit is now assigned. Let's go back to the beginning of the project now and set the other shield wire to the same circuit. This time though, I'm just going to click on the wire using Entity Info and select the Set Circuit Labels command from the context menu. So I pick overhead ground wires again, and I pick SW for the phase and click OK. Now I'm still in the graphical assignment mode, so I'll assign the transmission circuits as well. I'll click on the left side and call that circuit 1. Now notice the set phase labels in the 3D view are currently showing the stringing set phases, and I see it goes 1, 2, 3 from top to bottom. Let's say the top phase is electrical phase C, the middle stringing phase 2 is electrical phase B, and the bottom stringing phase 3 is electrical phase A. I click OK, and now you can see I'm labeling the circuit and phase, and coloring by phase. I'll do the same thing for the right circuit, but this time select circuit 2, and we'll say the phasing is A, B, C, as we go top to bottom, and click OK. Now let's go along the line and get to structure 92, which is an interesting transposition structure and we can start to see how using jumpers can easily help us track phasing through transposition structures and changes in structure geometry. Now let's go to the substation in the middle of the project near 52A and 52B. Notice how only the first half of the project is colored by phase and the second half is colored by the red color we had in sections modify for circuit one only. This is because there is no electrical jumper connection between the substation structures, so the circuit and phasing cannot be determined automatically. However, circuit 2 doesn't connect to the substation, so there is electrical jumper connections and PLS CAD could track the circuit and phasing. So what we need to do now is click on the wires coming out of substation 2 and again select the circuit labels command. So we assign the circuit label to circuit 1, and we'll say the stringing phase 1 at the substation structure is electrical phase B, phase 2 is phase A, and phase 3 is phase C, and click OK. And now we can see that the entire line has its circuits and phases assigned. We can go look at the last structure and see the phasing at the end. If we go back to the circuits table, 
we can see how all of the connected set numbers, phase numbers, and labels are all assigned. Let's now change the display conditions in sections, display options, to color by circuit. So now that we've covered how to define and assign circuits and phase labels, and how to change the display, let's take a look at some of the reporting functions. If we navigate to Lines, Reports, Survey Point Clearances, you'll see that we now have a separate tab in the report configurations called Structures and Circuits. Now in addition to specifying a structure range, you can also select a desired circuit. So if you're interested in checking clearances to the transmission wires and not the shield wires, we can select circuits 1 and 2 and leave the others unselected. Or if we wanted separate reports for each circuit, we can select just one. And at the bottom, we can see a selection summary based on what we've selected above. Another report we've incorporated into this feature is the thermal rating report. If I navigate to Lines, Reports, Thermal Rating Report, you'll see another Structures and Circuits tab. But when I click on this one, you'll see that in addition to circuit selection, I can also run by a selected phase. So if I wanted a thermal rating report for each individual phase, or just the lowest phase, I could select it. Also note the option for unassigned. This way I can run the report with or excluding sections that I haven't assigned circuits and phases for. This is very handy if there's other sections in the model you've included for crossing clearance checks but aren't part of the main project line that you don't need a thermal rating evaluation for. We've also added circuits and phases selections for the danger tree report and the stringing chart report. If you'd like more information about our software, please see our website at www.powline.com. If you have any questions, please contact us at info at If you'd like to receive a quote to purchase or renew your license, please contact us at sales at And for any technical questions, please contact us at support at Thank you for watching and your interest in our software, the industry standard in overhead line design.